Hello, everyone. I'm so excited to be here today with Edson Williams. Welcome, Edson. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I'm doing well. Um, I met Ed Edsa uh, a couple of years ago here in Zurich, Switzerland um, at the Curious Courses Day um, because he is a personal development coach and he is the owner of Lead by Example. And when I saw Edson on stage, I was really uh, impressed by um, well, his um, presence, but also uh, his wisdom because he really had a lot of golden nuggets that he shared with us on how to lead by example. And, um, and I also love a specialty, which is in the personal leadership, but also creative leadership. So, and today Edson will share uh, more about his journey on giving up sugar, which is already really cool to hear. And yeah, also fits so well with his lead by example um, to inspire other people to also do the same. So I would love to hear more about your experience with quitting sugar. But Edson, is there anything else you want to add about yourself before we get started? Um, no, not, not in particular. I'm very excited to be having this conversation. Um, yes, we, we met at the Curious Courses uh, Day event. And my good friend, uh, Mike, uh, when I told him about the, the, the no sugar uh, challenge that I uh, set for myself, oh you should speak to Sabine uh, she's the guru on the no sugar thing and it's like all right and so and then we got in touch and uh, here we are today yes I mean I'm always so excited to hear about real life cases because um one of the the, the biggest objections I hear from people is like oh my god I could never live without sugar so um and that's why it's always so inspiring to meet people like yourself who actually got started on the no sugar challenge and see that you know first of all you're still alive <laughs> and you're still actually having fun in life <laughs> and so can you share more with the audience about your personal experience with sugar in the past and what made you change and actually wanted to get into this no sugar challenge yeah, so in, I've been on this this um, low sugar uh, lifestyle for for quite a while, um, and it's not a no sugar, but it's a low sugar, <laughs> um, because no sugar is really really difficult, and uh, and you'll uh, well I'll, I'll elaborate a bit more on that, but it started with just crashing, just crashing around three or four o'clock, and then looking for candy bars. Um, oatmeal cookies I remember from my corporate times that these wonderful oatmeal cookies and they make me pull through to the next hour um, and what I found is that I I needed to come kind of, as soon as I started that I needed to keep refueling myself to keep me going um, and it's just uh, being tired it's just that's that's the main thing it's like I wanted more energy um, Crashing is just, I'm, I'm an active person. So crashing is something that just displeases me very, very much. <laughs> so yeah, so that's, that's where it all started. Wow. I mean, I love um, how you're, you actually even, you were so aware of the crashing and that, it, and that you even realized that sugar played a big role in that because a lot of people do experience, you know, the food coma or like the, the afternoon kind of energy dip, but, you know, they don't even really realize, you know, the role of sugar in that. So I'm very excited to hear that you realize the role of sugar there. And, and then how did you go about it to actually change it and to get into the challenge for yourself? Myself. So it's 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 it started by um, I learned that certain things made me just just crash, right? Like um, a Marsh or a Snicker bar. Um, I just noticed like the morning until I had one of those things, I was fine. But as soon as I had one of those things, I had like a peak, and then the, the lows were so massive that it's it's almost like well, there's only one explanation. It must have been that snicker bar that I just had. Um, so I started by looking for different things to eat um, so that, and I, I didn't know yet the impact of actual sugar, but I knew that these heavy sugary things didn't help, right? Um, and I learned on, because I worked in photography, uh, I still work in photography, uh, 
I consult in, in, in that area. Um, but in my corporate job, when I was working at Nike, I uh, remember one of the photographers I worked with, um, he didn't allow at lunch for any pastas. He says, yes, I don't want to have to deal with having to pick everybody up. <laughs> uh, and oh, so along the way, I found little nuggets, and I also noticed with red wine at dinner tables, like I'm a, a high energy person, but when I crash, I crash. So I can sit at a dinner table in the restaurant and I can crash, right? So a glass of red wine, I've not had a glass of red wine in since 2007. Wow. I mean, I'm just giggling away at the, the, the wine example because I always see that I personally don't drink, but then every time I'm sitting with someone at dinner and they have some wine, then after one, two glasses, I go, I don't know if it's me or if it's the wine, <laughs> but I feel so sleepy. I'm like, no, no, let it go. It's the wine. Like I see it like, you know, one after the other in front of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And, and that, that's the interesting thing is like, you don't need to be a genius to figure out that, hey, I just had a glass of wine and I, I now feel different. I just had a snicker bar, I now feel different, right? So it was that, and then in 2007, is it 2007? Yes, it was 2007. Um, and I cannot take any credit for it, and I have to give credit to, um, to Tony Robbins. I went to his uh, Unleash the Power seminar, and then they spent one whole day on vitality. And I learned about meat, um, and I learned about the food industry uh, and I learned about the things that are acidic for our bodies. So that's where I started to learn about all the hidden sugars, all the white stuff, uh, the breads, uh, the wheat, um, yeah, acid, acid addictive stuff like, um, sugar, refined sugars, um, but also, uh, white wheat, and um well coffee uh caffeine nicotine uh, all these things who have an acidic impact on on us so there are little things that in that moment they give us something but then there's a really expensive price to pay mm -hmm. right and it. what i've uh what i got to learn is that there's there's happy food and there's not that called happy food it's the stuff that gives me energy that lasts Right, so it's like when, when I'm having uh, broccoli, which I do eat fish, I don't eat meat. Uh, when I'm having broccoli, for instance, with, with uh, beautiful white fish, um, I can just cruise on. Um, so it's, it's noticing that kind of difference. And I've got a lot of, a lot of stuff to do, so I, I need to keep myself um, at, a, yeah, at a vital energy uh, level. And the whole idea of, of this particular challenge uh, is I needed to, well, I need to lead by example. And I've, uh, my clients vary from all kinds of situations that they have to deal with. Um, and uh, when one of my clients was uh, diagnosed with, um, with breast cancer, that inspired me. I said, okay, you're going off sugar, I'm going off sugar, that's it. Um, and it's also one of those very interesting things is that when, when you're diagnosed with either a heart disease or you've had a stroke or you have got cancer, it's always interesting to listen to what the doctors tell you to stop eating. Mm -hmm. right? The questions they ask you about, so do you smoke? Do you drink? And that makes me think like, okay, if you're an intelligent person, if the doctor's asking, is that the, if that's the first question the doctor asks you when you walk into the doctor's office, there must be something wrong with consuming those two things. Yeah, <laughs> there must be an impact, right? Otherwise, they, they won't ask that question. And then the first things they tell you to get off is red meat and sugars. Right? Once you, if you have a cardiovascular issue or if you have um, well, uh, cancer cells uh, in your body. And like, oh, that's interesting. Well, maybe we shouldn't consume these things in the first place. <laughs> so that's kind of where my thinking comes from. And um, yeah, I like to play with the lead by example idea of going there first, right? I'm also an NLP uh, master practitioner. And the one thing that I've learned when it comes to uh, hypnotizing is that you have to go first. 
So also when um, I need to walk my talk, right? Um, and by no means that I'm perfect, because I also want to be very honest about, um, I've taken on this 100 day challenge and I've fallen off the wagon a few times. Um, chocolate bar, um, two chocolate bars, uh, ice cream, um, and it's not about being perfect, but it is about committing and getting back on, on, on the horse and continue what I started, right? Because me too, I'm a human being and I've got my weaknesses, <laughs> right? Uh, that are in I moments think, um, of having funny conversations with myself. <laughs> and I really think like, I love it that you say lead by example, but it doesn't mean that you have to be perfect because that's sometimes a misconception. And I think, I'm really like the, the slogan of this year for me is like progress, you know, rather than perfection. And I think you just described that perfectly. Yes. I love that progress versus perfection. Yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. And what have been the, 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 what, you know, the main benefits from, for you personally to, to, to reduce your sugar intake? I'll, I want to share something that, um, that happened with my, with my, for my client, right. Um, who looks amazing and all her friends are asking her is it the coffee or is it the uh, do you think it's the coffee then i'll stop drinking coffee because they're all looking at her your skin looks so amazing you look so amazing right and this is somebody who is quote unquote uh diagnosed with uh with cancer right and um, and the conversation we're having is okay so you're you've been given a message you need to listen to that and take action um, and then your life can carry on right but if we ignore the signs it's just like that snicker bar that snicker bar told me something when i crashed afterwards right my body is telling me something like i have a glass of wine and my my head is not the way it used to be that is a very clear communication <laughs> right and yeah then you can act accordingly like oh actually right if you like that feeling by all means go go for it but if if you go like ah, i'm not too sure about that uh, i rather feel different uh, <laughs> on my toes sharp full of energy um, and then just listen to what your body is telling you and right? i remember when when i started because when i did the, the upw um it was a 30-day challenge uh, of doing alkaline so no alcohol no nicotine no caffeine uh, i did no meat no dairy uh, i still do no dairy i still do no meat uh, i do eat fish um right and then cutting out all these acid uh, addictive uh, uh, things and it was a 30-day challenge and i did it for i think 90 or, or more days and then what happens to your body is that your body starts response like a baby so whenever you put something in, in your body that your body doesn't agree to, it magnifies the communication. I remember having a, a sip of alcohol and I was like, whoa, that's what it must be like for, yeah, for a one-year-old to drink alcohol. Um, so your, your body is, is, is telling you something. And yeah, that's, that's, that's the benefit for me. It's like I, I don't get that, those communications, those unpleasant communications. Wow. I absolutely love that you talk about how to be in tune with your body and actually to pick up on the signals because I see that we're always living so much in our mind that we always, even though the symptoms are there, the signals are there, we're just completely neglecting these. And so it's great to hear that you have actually found a way to be more in touch with yourself. So you are your own guide and leader and you can be the leader of your own health then as well and yes yes right and, and if i if i can just, just share this is like beetroot for beetroots right very healthy very good for you my body doesn't like it right my tummy goes funny so the whole world can tell me how healthy it is and i can agree with that but my body doesn't agree with it <laughs> and that's what i'm listening to <laughs> right? and everybody should do the same it's like when we have gas, it's also your body communicating to you because that is not a natural thing for us to have, to build gas inside our bodies. So when we have that, it is our body saying, 
you've consumed something that doesn't really sit well with us. <laughs> and then we just listen and go like and find out what is that thing that has me have cast. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's, um, I've noticed it's really one of the advanced topics usually for people to get so much in tune and like with their body that they can really start to identify, you know, the factors and, um, yes. And we take it for granted so often it's like, yeah, because it's kind of average. Everyone is, you know, um, experiencing these symptoms. Oh, so it must be normal, but yeah, it like, no, we can feel so much better. And it's what you said, so much more clearer, um, uh, like, uh, just, um, uh, mind and uh, to be more effective, like productive, uh, also the more energy. So I'm so happy to hear also that you have experienced all of those uh, factors. And what are the, the free tips you would like to share with the audience on, on how to basically reduce their sugar intake? Oh, wow. Okay. Um, so, yeah, two things. So one is um, fruit. So I um, have some dates. I love dates. Um, and drink more. Drink more. And then when I say drink more, uh, drink more water. But also when, you've, when you put something in your water, like uh, wheat gloss powder, um, it, um, it feeds you. Because all the nutrients that are that are in there, and um, oh, I forgot the word. What's the word? Um, basically, it helps your salt levels, right? So that re-energizes, uh, energizes you, especially if you're an active person, right? So if you're like if you're like an athlete who goes for runs and and, and stuff like that, then combining drinking water and also drinking uh, weed grass will will help you, um, and just eating regularly, right? This this idea of of eating three times a day, um, I don't know who came up with it, but it's 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 total nonsense. I think you need to listen to your body, right? Um, I have a yeah, we all right. We <laughs> my wife and I we have an, an, an eight year old, and we have never forced her. We've always listened to when she is hungry. We've not always done the same thing with sleep. We never forced her to uh, forcibly woke her up. We do tell her when to go to bed because she's a kid. Um, but um, by, by doing that, it allows her to be in tune with her body. And we know that straight out of school, she is starving. She wants to eat. She naturally doesn't like eating late in the evening. She will eat at four. She'll eat at five. She'll eat at six, seven o'clock. She will have just... It's because it's too late for her, right? So it's it's feeding yourself when you have that feeling of oh, actually, I need something, uh, right? And then looking for things that give energy: uh, almond nuts, uh, cucumbers, things that contain water, because water has a high frequency. So um, yeah, cucumbers, uh, salads, uh, broccoli, uh, all those things, and nuts. Uh, carry some nuts with you. Uh, little grace uh, package, which you can make yourself. You just buy a bunch of mixed nuts. You stick them in the oven, uh, or right, and you just make little packages for yourself. So there's all kinds of ways, as long as you listen to your body. That, I mean. That's, that's the one thing that I would say is like start to listen to your body because your body is communicating with you. Mm -hmm. I love that example also of like really eating when you're hungry um, because that's also what you mentioned with the beetroot. Everyone is different. So we can't say you have to eat six to nine times a day. You know, you can't say you have to eat one time a day. No, it depends on how active you are, how, um, how what your body needs and, and you can't compare it to anyone else. So I, I really love that. And that's also when, again, it comes back to being in tune with your body. And I love the fact that you also share here that for you, reducing your sugar intake was really the one big step to get more in tune because it is like you get so uh, kind of, you know, foggy head and, and, and so it's really hard to be in tune with the body. So I love that, um, yeah, kind of the, the key lesson for me from your here, listening to your stories is like, okay, take it as a first step, get more in tune with your body. And then from there, you can actually adapt accordingly, but very intuitively and naturally. 
Yes, and I have a question for you. Yes. As we are uh, about to uh, wrap up because of time. And um, I would love to interview you because, um, yeah, as I was introduced to you as the guru, I know there's really a lot more to learn, which I would love to share with, um, you know, with my audience. Um, because, yeah, it's nice to learn from me, but I'm not a specialist. And uh, you're the guru. <laughs> I would love to, uh, if yeah, if you accept my invitation, I would love to do uh, an, an interview with you. Yes, I would be happy to, whenever whenever you want. <laughs> okay, excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you. So if you much. already have one question now that you want to shoot, I'm also open to just spontaneously uh, give my first uh, answer if you want. I, I would love to, but I'm I'm over time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, I had to run. <laughs> Well, um, Edson, if people want to connect to you, where and how can they connect? Um, I must say I'm already very excited because you just shared with me previously that you have um, uh, pimped up your website, the leadbyexample.com. So I'm very excited to check it out and also for the people to check it out. Are there any other ways that people can connect with you? Um, go to the website. I would say go to the website. I have uh, also I'm on, on Facebook and uh, Instagram, but I am really poorly in creating content for those uh, th those platforms. I'm really focused on 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 the website. Um, I've built it for my clients. Um, everybody who's listening who's not the client of mine uh, yet, you're welcome to go there. But it's a platform where I just want to share all my learnings um, that I take away from just life, but also all my principles that I've learned and developed uh, over time, what I've learned from my mentors, but also what I, all the case studies from my coaching sessions so that um, people can learn from, from each other. Great, that sounds wonderful. And thank you so much for your openness and honesty and your authenticity. Um, yes, I'm very, very touched by your message also to lead by example and especially because it's, yeah, it's very uh, raw, I would say. Like, um, it's very nice to be connecting to you and to mm -hmm. hear from uh, yeah, you and all of your experience, both from yourself as well as your clients. Thank you so much for the interview and for your time and for sharing your golden nuggets. Oh, thank you, Sweet. Thank you. Bye-bye, <laughs> everyone. Bye. <laughs>